So let's take a minute and talk about conceptual frameworks. This is the hardest thing that you will have to create. So the conceptual framework is a, it's a synthesis of literature, but it's more like a synthesis of ideas that's backed with previous research and theory and literature. And it's how you're thinking about your study. It's how you're thinking about your topic. It's how you are going to conceptualize everything about your study. And this is introduced in chapter one. So I'm going to tell you the story of my conceptual framework so that you can hopefully understand how they're created, but also how they change. Um, so just reading this first sentence, apparently I had a whole conceptual framework before this one that I don't even remember. But this is the one that I pitched originally to my committee, that your knowledge of data and assessment predicts your use, or influences at least, your use of data and assessments, right? The more you know it, the more you use. But that is influenced and impacted by your beliefs about what data and assessments are and what they're good for. And then I started thinking about, well, how, if this is what I want to do, how do I connect that to a survey? And so I start thinking about like content examples. If these are the things that they need to do, um, then I could create a survey about that. So statements would be like, I know how to, what is the content? And then my scale. For the use section, it would be how often do I do that content from, you know, never to whatever. And then there was the belief scale that would be a little bit different, something like, what do you use this for? Is it to prove learning? Is it to improve learning? Something to that effect is the initial thing that I was trying to understand. And then I have kind of analysis ideas and then my research questions, the first draft of them at least. And then the more that I read and the more that I considered, I was like, we, we can't just do that. We got to go deeper. And so then I started working on a deeper idea that there's these three big ideas. There's kind of assessment literacy. What do you know? How do you create things? Your analytical skills. How are you triangulating student learning? Are you disaggregating data? How are you actually analyzing things? And then the instructional decision-making aspect, because there's a lot of that. And that's kind of the whole point of an assessment is to direct your instruction for evaluating things. How are you using things to make decisions and all of that? And then I even mapped that onto other ideas. So Bloom's taxonomy, like these are kind of lower level skills that this builds up to actually being able to reflect and revise. And then I've got all of my rationale, my defense for these, why I believe it works like this, how I think about things, you know, some citations of where things are, and then notes from other people. But then what happened is I started collecting data. And I did my first focus group and realized that beliefs is a whole ball of wax and is a dissertation on its own. This exploded in both focus groups. And I was like, I can't even tackle this. It's too big. And we need to know knowledge and use first. And then we could build up two beliefs. So I dropped this whole factor in the middle of data collection. Game on my committee said I can't do it. Here's what I'm modifying. And they agreed and we're good with it. So then I was doing my expert reviews because I'm creating a measure you know, it's part of it um, using this framework. And I talked through this framework with one of my experts and she was like, um, this is all wrong. You are thinking about this incorrectly. You missed an entire section of literature and gave me lots of new things to read, lots of new ways to think about it. And uh, she was right that it's a process. So there's this process of assessment and how teachers should be using assessment. And I was able to redefine everything. And my final survey ended up being based on this. So I know how to use, um, I know how to set learning goals. And then the use would be I set learning goals and then how often. The same with communicating, choosing assessments, all of this is how my survey ended up being. So it's fluid. But it's also what are the big things that you need to understand and think about if you're trying to understand teachers' use of assessment and knowledge of assessment. What, what is assessment? How, what are the parts of assessment? What are the things about assessment? And then my literature review ended up breaking these down. 
So it explained this concept and how the whole thing worked and how it's a, it's a cycle, but there's also like jumps all the way around it. You know, this cycle could take place in a unit, in a year, in a two minute, you know, introduction. I could do all of this. Um, but then it guided all of my data collection. It guided the way that I thought about how I'm asking my questions, the information I need from teachers. It's everything. So my literature review then broke it down and said, here's everything about setting learning goals. Why is it important? What's the research out there? What's the recommendation? What are the teacher standards that were needed? We're talking about communicating learning goals. Why is that important? Why can't you just set it and move on? Well, students need to know what their goals are. So again, literature on that, showing the impact, showing the effectiveness, showing the um, teacher standards, and then all the way through. And especially when I got to certain ones, there were no teacher standards. This is a huge gap. Um, and there were no, there's no information about this. So it's like, here's what we should be doing. Here's why there's nothing out there. Anyway, when you are thinking about your conceptual framework, you probably are going to start really big with the big concepts and then start to narrow. What are the kind of moving parts and pieces that are recommended in these? Maybe it's a chart like this. Maybe it's a pyramid. Maybe it's a circle. Completely depends on what makes sense and how things are connected to other things. That will hopefully help you start to be able to draw some sort of a visual picture of what it is that you're trying to understand, and that will guide every other aspect of your project. Good luck.